being curious. But here's what the Spirit of God says to us tonight. I guess we think if we get on a holy regimen and we read our Bible for two hours a day and we pray three hours a day and we fast 12 meals a week that somehow God's going to look upon us with favor and give us special favor because we do those things. Now, I'm not saying those things aren't important. But you know what those things do? They change us. They don't change salvation. They change us. They change us. They change us. They change our character. They change everything. They change our belief system. They strengthen our faith. But it doesn't change salvation. Are you hearing me tonight? It doesn't change the fact that we are in Christ. And it's not because of what we've done. It's because of what He did. You've got to understand, again, the principle in Romans is the same faith that Abraham had, God has imputed to you. Did you hear me say, oh, I, I don't compare with Abraham or any of the great patriarchs. Oh, yes, you do. If you believe God and you believe He's the Messiah, you believe He died on the cross, you believe He was raised from the grave, you've got the same favor in the sight of God Abraham had. God imputed it to you. God doesn't show favoritism. He gives it to all. All. So he's just looking for somebody to believe him. He said, so he that believeth and is what? Baptized. Why is baptism so important? Does baptism save us? No. I, I, I see people, I talk to people at times who want to get their children baptized. They think that guarantees, that doesn't guarantee the thing. The only thing guarantees is they're going to get wet when you dump them. That's what a lot of people do when they get baptized. They just get wet. But baptism is nothing more than an outward sign of an inward confession. It just means when you allow yourself to be dunked, that you're identifying with Jesus Christ and you want to do it publicly so the entire world knows that you cast your lot with the Messiah. Now he said do it. Again, it's, it's an outward sign of an inward confession you've made to Christ. So I believe in it. I believe we should do it. So he said, he that believes. That's all he said you have to do. You know why I, I said, you know, I could pick on other denominations. I'll just pick on our own. Because I know our own better than I know others. When it comes to believing and working. If I could work my way to heaven, when I got to heaven, you know what you'd have to put up with all your life, the rest of eternity? You'd have to put up with a loud mouth Pentecostal preacher bragging all over heaven about how he worked his way to heaven. That's what you'd have to put up with. But when you and I step into the presence of God, the only one we'll have to boast in will be the Messiah himself. When the Lamb comes marching out and the Lamb, then we see Him even in heaven as the Lamb slaughtered. John the Revelator said, I wept much because of it. He said, but then I saw a lion from the tribe of Judah come forth and take the seals and he was able to break the seals thereof. The worthy one of heaven will be the Christ. We'll boast and brag in Him. Because you and I realize we didn't get there by our works. We got there because we just believed it. <laughs> Do you still believe Him tonight? Do you still believe you made the right choice? Do you still believe Jesus is the best thing ever happened to you? Amen. Oh, i got to hurry. I'm feeling a preach coming on in this house. So he that believeth and is baptized shall be what? Saved. Not made his old think so, hope so. Shall be saved. You believe you're saved tonight. You have people declaring, well, I hope I make it. Well, I don't want to be in your crowd. Because if you're still hoping, then hope has not been made secure in your life. 
I don't have to hope. I know in whom I believe and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him. Can I just shout over that? Hallelujah. I'm persuaded. I don't have to. I hope I hear people stand up and say, pray for me that I'll hold on. Come on now. Jesus is holding on to you. You're not holding on to him. The Bible makes very clear. He's the one that's able to keep me from falling. And to present me before the Lord pure, faultless, spotless. So the next time you Lord, help me to hold on. And, and this crowd, you know, this one that I've been singing for years, I hate. There are some songs I hate. And one is... Lord, give me a cabin in glory. Give me a cabin at the corner of glory. You ever heard that little song? Give me a little, yeah, give me a little cabin in the corner of glory and I'll be happy. Come on. There's some songs, I don't, but listen, if I get to heaven, I'm not looking for the little cabin in glory. The Bible said in my father's house are many mansions. If that were not true, I would have told you so. <laughs> I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost in the house. Thank you, Father. Oh, I'm feeling good in this place. Amen. Give me a cabin, Lord, in glory. You know, we as Pentecostals, we've sung some songs. And we really have. And my granddad was an old-fashioned. Uh, matter of fact, my granddad was a preacher and he took tents all over the country. Set up tent meeting. I saw one the other day. I said, well, look at that, honey. There's an old-fashioned tent meeting going on. He carried tents all over the country. They had to go three weeks, four weeks, and a month having these tent meetings. And a lot of people got saved. I'm, thank I'm thankful for that. But we used to sing a song, and you probably remember. I don't know why. I'm not mad that I'm just telling you. Remember that old song we sing? And we'll say, how do you do? We'll sit down by the river with all acquaintance renewed. You'll know me by the smile that I wear. But, but let's be honest now. If we get to heaven, I'm not going to be asking you, and you're not going to be asking me, how do you do? If you're in heaven, you're doing fine. Glory to God. Amen. Oh, God help us. Some of the things we've sung. Mm. I better move on. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not is just this plain. Shall not they shall be damned or lost eternally. It's as simple as that. You either believe He's the Messiah and receive Him as your Lord and Savior, or you don't. There is no in-between. Amen? Amen? I said there is no in-between. And then I'm so intrigued because these, listen, if you'll notice in your Bible, if your Bible is like my Bible, these words are in red, which means it's not a mis misprint. Jesus said, on most Bibles, it says in the front, words of Christ in red. So these are the words of Christ. Jesus said that. And then he said, remember now, these verses are in connection with the commission to go out into the world. Everywhere. Go everywhere. You know, in the book of Acts, I wanted to talk to us today about, about the disciples and about those who got saved. In Acts 2 and 42, uh, many believed and they were saved. They gladly, the Bible said, received the word of God. And Acts 44 talks about many of them heard the word, believed, and the number was 5,000. Acts 6 and 7 says, so grew the word of God and it multiplied. Acts 8, 4. Acts 12 and 24 declares, so grew the word of God and it multiplied. Amen. Hallelujah. But time and time again, the scripture says they went everywhere preaching the word. Signs followed them. 
as an attestation to what they were preaching. And here it is. Here's the commission of the Lord. How did the church respond to this commission later on in the book of Acts? I, I just quoted that to you. Many of the verses says they went everywhere, even those that were scattered abroad due to persecution. They went everywhere. Herod was struck down, the Bible said. Came marching out one day in his glorious robes and, and stood forward and began to claim that the kingdom that he had, that he had garnered, he had done it. The scripture said the angel of the Lord struck him dead. He was eaten with worms right there. But in connection with that, the Bible said the word of God, read it for yourself, grew and multiplied. Fear came upon the church. After the incident with Ananias and Sapphira, when Ananias dropped dead and Sapphira dropped dead and they took him out and buried them, reverential fear and awe fell on the church and the Bible said they grew and multiplied. That's the kind of church I'm talking about that God wants with His people. Where the power of God is so strong. So yes, some people will get scared. And it'll upset them. But how many of you know there are several stages that take place in a person's life before they get saved? Sometimes they'll get glad. You've seen it. I've seen it. The Lord will start dealing with them in terms of conviction. And they'll get glad for a little while. Then they'll get sad because they're under conviction. And God's just working on them. And they'll cry and carry on and mope around. Then they'll get glad again. Then I've seen people under conviction get mad. There's a man, they're mad with everybody. Don't even know why they're mad. But it's because God's dealing with them. And then when they get saved, they get glad again. Hallelujah. It's the way God works. Sometimes God doesn't. He doesn't listen. He broke the mold when He works. But the Bible says they went everywhere. That's what I want you to get. Everywhere they went. How many of you read our bulletin? You know, I pray you read the bulletin. I wrote an article in there from the pastor's heart about four areas of ministry God's going to give this church and we're going to be on our ministry efforts upon. First is recovery. Acts 26, 16 through 18 is our mission vision statement. And then how we're going to do it? Four ministry modules. Number one, we're going to recover that which was lost. And when we get them recovered around the altar for the cause of Christ, we're going to get them into discovery. Where discovery, they'll discover where they fit in this church, where they fit in the kingdom of God, where they fit relative to the gifts God's given them. And then we're going to move them to discipleship, where their disciple will become a true minister and a witness for the glory of God. Hallelujah. We disciple them to have a strong relationship first with Jesus Christ. And then we disciple and train them to do ministry in the streets or do ministry in the earth. And lastly, deployment, where we send them out into the earth, just like Jesus sent out his disciples, carrying the gospel from pillar to post, being a witness and a minister for his cause. And here's what he said. I'm going to come to a close uh, because I, I, uh, this is just a good devotion tonight. I, I'm just getting heated up and I'm going to have to slow down. And these signs, say that with me, these signs, what's a sign? Well, anybody knows if you're driving the road, you run into signposts that are telling you where we're going. Signs attesting miracles. And these signs will follow them that what? Here it is again. That believe. Say that word with me. That believe. God's looking for some believers. People who believe He's still God. That He hasn't changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, that means He's in my past. <laughs> but because He's God, He's already in my present. And because he's still God, he's already out yonder in my future. Anybody hear what I'm saying tonight? And because he's still God and he has not changed, means he hasn't changed a thing about the way he works. He's still working. And he's still wanting to do great things. He said, but these Simeon, the original term, these attesting miracles will follow them that simply believe. 
But I still love you. Do you still believe in divine healing? Do you believe God can still divine the healing? Do you still believe as a church God can drive out a devil with just a word? Do you still believe that the God we serve can still create and is still creative, can still create miracles out of nothing? The Bible said this world where all God spoke it into existence out of nothing. There was nothing there. God spoke it and it was there. God said it and it happened. Which means He can do creative miracles in our life too. He can take nothing and make something out of it. That's the God we serve. Amen? You know anybody that can create a tree? No, you don't. You know people that can grow a tree from a sapling or a seed, but God made the seed. I feel the Holy Ghost in here tonight. I ain't getting no help. Come on, lift your hands and say, help the preacher tonight, Lord. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe, shall follow after them. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow. Which means to chase you believe the blessings of God will chase you down if you believe? That's what he said. He said, these signs will follow them that believe. That work, that do, no. That just believe. Do you understand that's why agreement is so powerful? Where any two or three agree is touching whatever they ask would be done. Did he say that? These signs will follow them that believe. And here are the signs, he said, that would follow real believers. He said, in my name, they will what? They will cast out devils. He said, they will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. What does that mean? I just believe it means it will trample upon demonic forces and powers. I don't think he's talking about snake handling. I don't even think the context is there. Now he did say some would do it. And if you want to do it, this is not the place to do it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. If you've got an urge to handle a snake, I can send you to the church in Georgia where you can go handle all you want and then come back home when you get through with your snake handling. He did say they would do it. But what he's referring to is the power of to take authority over the devil in the name of Jesus Christ. He said believers will do it. They'll take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing, what is he really talking about? Let, let's just bring this into context. Remember, this is the commission of our Lord to go out into the world and preach the gospel. So he simply saying, as you take the gospel, just know this. I will be protecting you. I will be keeping you. When Paul was on the island of Malta, you remember that? He was busy working, helping gather sticks. They had just shipwrecked on the island. The Bible said as he was gathering sticks. That's a good picture of a man of God. He's not waiting on everybody else to pick up sticks for him and tote his Bible. He doesn't have an armor bearer that's toting his Perrier for him. No, the man of God is out there helping gather sticks too. He's helping work. And when he helps gather the sticks, the Bible said, out of that heat, when they lit the fire, out of the heat. That's why I told you this morning when the power of God starts moving, out of the sticks will come the serpent because the heat will run it out. How many of you believe tonight when the power of God starts to move, the heat will run the You can hear me tonight. When the power of God begins to move and the Holy Spirit begins to stir, the devil can't stay. He can't take the heat. The power of God is too strong. No wonder people will get up, leave, and walk out because the heat's too hot. They can't stand it. It's either get in or get out. And a lot of them will get out. How many of you would say, Holy Ghost burn hot in this place? Hot out of my sheet, cold out of my side. Burn hot in this place. But the Apostle Paul is gathering the sticks. And out of the heat comes a viper. And the natives of the island knew that viper. They had seen it before. They had lost loved ones to those vipers. And so when he latched on to Paul, 
They thought he'd just drop dead. But what had the commission of our Lord said? <laughs> what did the word of God say? If you go out believing and you're preaching the gospel and a serpent happens to latch upon you and try to latch on to your life, what do you do? The gospel said, come on. If they take up serpents or they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. Well, the Apostle Paul wasn't worried. They're standing there waiting, thinking God is judging the man because he's a criminal. The old apostle, <laughs> the old apostle just shakes him off in the fire. I wish you'd do that. You may, have, have, have we ever sung that? How long have been since we sung that little song? Shake him off. Just shake him off. How many of you would just shake him off right now? Come on. Just, there's some things maybe in your life you need to just shake off. Shake off. Shake off those heavy bands. Lift up those holy hands. Right now in the name of Jesus. I wish somebody would obey the Lord. Just stand up praise Him in this house for a moment. Would you do it? Would you just stand on your feet for a moment and shake him off in the fire? Whatever it is in your life, shake it off. The Bible says nothing deadly will hurt you. Shake it off now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Woo! Well, I'm feeling God in the house. Hallelujah. That's right. Obey the Lord, Brother Clark. Shake it off in the name of Jesus. Somebody needs to obey the Lord in this house. Shake it off. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to obey the Lord in the house. That's right. Shake it off. Shake it off in the name of Jesus. Obey the Lord. Maybe there's something in your life tonight you need to shake off. Shake it off in the fire by the power of God right now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Woo! Lift up your hands and praise Him, church. Worship the Lord. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Miss Daisy, I, the Holy Ghost said, lift up both those hands and shake them in the name of Jesus. Hey. Yay. In the name of the Lord.